For this lesson, we're going to be focusing on light-dependent reactions. And as the name says, obviously, uh, this reaction requires light. Um, and the end result is for two things to happen. Um, the real purpose of all of it is, and I'll use a red pen here, I think. Give me one second. Um, the real purpose of it is to actually get um, two things to be made. We want to convert that AT, ADP and something called NADPH into ATP and NADPH. And these kind of look at them as your batteries for energy. And I had sort of talked about that ATP and NADPH is sort of the gas of the cell, and that is in fact true. Maybe look at them as batteries. And ADP and NADPH, as I had said earlier about AT ADP, is it's sort of a half-charged battery, where ATP is the fully charged one, ready to give off its energy. And also, as a result, we have oxygen gas being a waste, okay? So the cell doesn't want to make this, it just is a waste product. So let's go through exactly all the steps of that. And we'll do this through this animated video. And it's taking a moment to load here. I'm gonna pause it. So just quickly um, identifying our things. We have photosystem two here. I think it actually identifies all of these here. And photosystem two uh, has energy in the form of sunlight hidden. And this photosystem with its pigments, remember it contains chlorophyll in there, it gets excited. And when it gets excited, it starts a process of the electrons moving through these electron carriers through a whole process that is called the electron transport chain. And remember these molecules here, their real reason, their own purpose, only purpose is to move those electrons through. And we'll see later why this is so important that the electron moves through this one here, okay? So as I had said before, um, the light hits this photosystem too, and the water that just happens to be around it as a result gets zapped, electrocuted, and split apart to being one hydrogen, and uh, to being hydrogen and oxygen. And as this hydrogen splits, it leaves an electron here, okay? So this electron that you see over here actually comes from the water. And this electron then moves through these molecules and I'll just show the pictures. It mu moves through these molecules so that this hydrogen, which is on the outside of the thylakoid, here's the thylakoid, can actually move in, and we'll see that right now. So you see how that electron moved through, hydrogen pumped in. And so over time, you have a high concentration of hydrogen. And this is the whole reason we actually have this electron transport chain, and we'll see why that's so important later on. Okay, so eventually what happens is that the electron then has moved through this whole system right here and ends up into a molecule called photosystem one. Same thing, contains chlorophyll and it captures sunlight. So we have the sun hitting this. Let's get the sun to do it. All right, and that gives it the last boost, that last piece of energy so that it moves through um, the last one of these electron uh, carriers, okay? And as it does that, this electron has to go someplace. And it is NADP, which is almost like a form, an energy form right here, that actually, let me see what happens. So um, it 
will grab that electron and make with that electron attach two more hydrogens to become NADPH, okay? So it's now a stored battery. And I'm gonna let this sort of run through here. But again, a ATP, let's see if I can get this to stop. Um, ATP is, is similar, or ADP is similar to NADPH, just different um, molecules, but have the same function. They store energy, and it needs to gain that electron from here so that it becomes a fully charged battery. Okay, and so this is just a review of how that NADPH uh, gets made. You have the electron moving through to the last part, and at some point it's going to actually make NADPH. All right, so as this is happening, you, oh, you continuously have, um, with every electron, another hydrogen moving through. So however many electrons you have, one hydrogen moves through. And again, as I said, you want to have a high concentration of hydrogens. And so you see more and more hydrogens going in there. So now we have all of a sudden this difference in, um, in our membranes. Inside the thylakoid, we have a high concentration of hydrogens. And you notice all of them have positive charges. So you can say this is a very positively charged area. And this one has area has a much lower concentration of hydrogens. And what do we know about diffusion? How do things like to move? Well, they like to move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. And it just so happens that this molecule, ATP synthase, um, is able to actually open up for hydrogens and move through. And so you see that hydrogen moving through. And as the hydrogen moves through, it starts spinning. And this spin here causes ADP, which is just floating around, to pick up an extra hydro, uh, to pick up that energy to add another phosphate to it to make it ATP. It's now a fully charged battery. Okay, so in the end, every one of these hydrogens is going to eventually move through, and with each hydrogen hydrogen that moves through, you have another ATP made. And that's why plants can actually produce their food. They have already an energy source using the sunlight. So this is just the first step called the light reaction. We now actually need to use that energy to make glucose itself. And that will be in another section.